clicking. And we're clicking a button so that we can go live. Look at that. We're live. And it worked. Yeah. I think. Hello. My goodness. Hello. Hello, everybody. Hi. It's been a morning trying to get this stuff going. Hey, uh, thank what you. What do you mean? We've had a very smooth and consistent so ride throughout the entire thing with no technical issues oh, with yeah, me or Erevis or anyone ever. We'll do, nope, some quick never. <laughs> we'll do some quick announcements that include um, hi, and uh, we are still doing our, our Roll for Wishes campaign. Uh, and we've got this is like we're in our last week of it, guys. So we're looking to see if we can get just under a hundred bucks more here for the Make a Wish International Organization. You can see the link in the chat. So if you are so inclined, uh, the penguin wants you to do it. So um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do that. Um, other ones, we have, <laughs> hey, merch. Merch is happening. So I got my stickers finally. They, my fi stickers are wrapped. So there's that one. But here's uh, this one's for the Friday game, the Olivon Chronicles one. And then no, no, no. This is no. the one that you guys really appreciate because it came from your campaign. Yo. Nella, emotes, stickers. Do going it for the on B. My computer. That's where they're going. Um, and there's of course mer uh, other things like this guy here and our Olivon Chronicles melt pink. Yeah, so if you guys enjoy uh, any of the things that you watch here on the Twitchiness, then, of course, you can take it with you when you're not on the Twitchiness as merch. Um, Don't just then, do it for me. Do it for the bee. Do it for the bee. Uh, yeah, okay. So uh, the next one is uh, I, just, I, got, I got goofy while we were gone, and I'm going to have to switch my screen so I can show you my goofiness while we were, while we were not online. Um, so here, here comes the goofiness because if you're in, uh, if it's my players, if you guys are in the um, the game, I wish to show you the things. So I, I, I made scared. logos. <laughs> we save face. <laughs> I love the like house. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> So it's called the. <laughs> so I looked up brands like from from Texas brands kind of thing, and this is a common strategy. This is a common thing for brands. So yeah, <laughs> you have your own brand now. Here is the best thing about that, though. Have any of you seen the Save the Bees girl on TikTok or YouTube Shorts? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That looks exactly like her logo. <laughs> I'm not going for that. I totally forgot about that logo. That was not what I was doing, but I'm appreciating it. Hers, to be fair, hers has like a little beehive and it has like little bees going okay. in, but it's like save the bees so and it's like right. slay. No, I licensed this. We're good to go. We're clear. We're, we're, we're all clear. No copyright strikes for us. Okay. Um, Imagine that girl popping in here being like, he stole my logo. <laughs> I'm going to be like, well, I was inspired. No, I, 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 really, I forgot totally the we did. logo even existed. We forgot you existed, girl. It's not that important. Ooh, that's not, that's not saying it. Anywho, we're going to play our game, <laughs> shall we? So, um, where we left off uh, last week, we had quite an encounter because the party had managed to get themselves onto the backs of cranes, large giant cranes, to get themselves uh, to the uh, Palace of Heart's Desire. Which is uh, as soon as they dropped off with the cranes inside the uh, the gardenscape that was uh, that sits out in front of the palace, and that's what they saw when they first came to the palace. This large, um, almost like a Disney meets druidic nightmare kind of palace, uh, where you've got these tall spires and towers um, in this orange and, and purple twilight um, area, uh, and one of the towers kind of off its off its uh, settings and being held aloft by this large vine holding it up uh and then a variety of different things inside the garden which you never really had a chance to explore explore at all because by the time as soon as you landed um and kind of took a quick little glance around at the weirdness that this one was uh you were immediately uh, thrown off by the jabberwock which you now know to be a fairly large fairly large serpentine dragon-like creature with a stub face and ridiculously large eyes that you 
um, didn't hide from very well and as a result ended up finding out exactly what it can do with those large eyes which was basically letting it lay out streaks of fire from his like like fire gazes basically and tore up through you guys a number of times finally dotty using a little bit of invoke invocation of the name of zabilna uh, was able to prevent uh complete annihilation of your party um but certainly not without a lot of pain and suffering that happened first. Erebus was, uh, Erebus and Volric in particular were subject to the Jabberwock's strange garbledy gooky sounds um, that made them lose their wits. And er Erebus running to the door at one point in time, unable to open it, ended up, eventually they all ended up running towards this tower on this, I'm going to call it the Southwest, although it's, you know, it's the Fey Wow. There's cardinal directions are not very cardinal. Um, but they uh, do eventually end up in the southwest um, t uh, kind of uh, towerish area that happens to have some garden still inside it. Um, Scrags, while there, was able to meet a new character. The Jabberwock fly uh, flies off. Apparently, you're not large enough food for it. Um, and you guys end up meeting uh, this new person, creature, thing called uh who scraggs introduces to you as elegy now elegy is a relatively large iron statue lion and has greeted you oh and i've already lost this you know this is how i organize my hands um there it is yeah has greeted you by saying um Yes, you can you can call us enemy, and basically at this point in time, because this is kind of where we picked up, and uh, Scrags isn't with us today. Um, I'm gonna just basically kind of tell you what Scrags had experienced while you guys were still fighting the Jabberwock, which you guys are still very much like immediately out of that combat, stressed and in pain, and still trying to get dying lines back into your <laughs> uh, where. Scrags turns to him and says, it's, it's best if you found it. What's it going to be And that'll probably be the last thing I say for Scrags. <laughs> Fair play. Well, Erevis is uh, going to adjust his shirt and kind of shake off that last encounter. <laughs> He's not as beat up as you might have uh, expected, but uh, he had some close calls there. Hmm. Let's look at my HP value, shall we? <laughs> <laughs> I've been downed twice, murdered six times, <laughs> my dignity lost, more times than I can count. <laughs> well, at least you have your strength back. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Dottie will take a knee, but it won't look much different since she's already so close to the ground. That's true. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, and Envy says, or sorry, Envy will tell you. You bring great. Uh, looking over the scrags, you bring honorable friends to treat with us. That's the uh, first time in a while. Paul Rick doesn't called that. Volric does not move. Not only is he extremely pissed off, he is also extremely near dead. Uh, so <laughs> he's gonna be like, and the uh -huh. towards you, eyes dead set on you. I look back with no hesitation, no fear, nothing, just back pissed. Back to back to it's obvious that. Intelligence runs in only a few of your needs. And st it steps off the pedestal and starts walking towards you. It is a large iron creature. That is, you can hear, that you can hear kind of the sinews of what would be muscles kind of creaking as if metal on metal. I, uh, I conjecture. Did you know that personality has a lot to do with your intelligence? I didn't know that until I lost it. 
Volvic doesn't say anything, but he continues to watch as his mm -hmm. fan gets close to him. Still not moving. Still not going down. The one last what? look over to you, Dottie and Scrags, and he says, With you, or not. Oh, you mean Volvic? Yes, we do. Uh, you'll have to excuse us. We just had a pretty intense battle, and um, things are a little tense right now. Honor is never relinquished here. That was not the Guardian. We are. And if you do not have the sense to take a knee when it is expected, we will make you take it anyway. Oh, I didn't hear that part. <clears throat> um, you both hear a message in your head from Dottie that, that just says, Just fucking bow! <laughs> oh, I didn't hear that part. Okay, uh, yeah, Erebus, <laughs> Erebus will g do a deep and gracious bow. Okay. And, uh, will conceal the, uh, <laughs> smirk that comes on almost... On uh, on a bait, uh, whatever the word is. <laughs> Words English yeah, sure. very hard, but Volvic looks up at the dude, doesn't do anything, and then does a little tiny curtsy. Curtsy. <laughs> they do a curtsy, and Volvic's like, "When I come from, showing no fear in the feet in the face of someone." clearly more threatening than you, is a sign of honor and respect. Both of you roll deception checks. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, though! <laughs> oh, is it true? Well, then roll, a roll persuasion check. Slay. Uh, both were at minus two, oh, so it minus. wouldn't matter. I must find my stat block. Give me one more. An eight! <laughs> I'm finding my stat block. Du, 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 du. Oh, it's not taking it. Why is it not taking it? Let's try that again. Uh, bing, 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 ding, ding, ding. I don't know why I don't expect you guys to do shit like this. I need to actually be better prepared for it. But um, this is the thing, though. Here we go, here we go, here we go. What is my wisdom? Oh. Meets it, beats it. So, Erebus, um, what is your smirk be lying to this um, iron lion creature? Just a... Uh, it, it, it's something he himself is trying to wipe away, but it's just a self... Con like, basically, he's cocky. And he cannot help it. Gotcha. And he, he, he's just like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna bow to you, but... I don't think you're better than me. Fair Which, enough. You know, that's not dishonorable, really. It's just, I'm showing you respect. Well. I think I'm better. <laughs> yeah, well. there you go. Um, and the Iron, the Iron Lion speaks to, you, uh, speaks to you as you do your curtsy, Valric, and says, Where you are from is of no relevance. You are in the realm of the mistress. Here you will abide by the expectations she sets forth. This yeah, yeah, yeah. mistress, if I may ask, would it happen to be one of the, uh, oh, what were they called? The, oh, that evil group they were talking about. I'm so bad with names. You've got lots of options. You've got the three hags, you've got uh, Valor's Call, and you've got the League of Malevolence. The League of Malevolence, I think, is the one he's talking you about. Not ha it, she wouldn't happen to be part of the League of Malevolence, would she? Certainly not. Very good. Uh, I just wanted to know where we stood. We and our counterpart were created to remember to plug in your computer. Uh, to... Um, <laughs> Remember, to, kids, plugging your computer in is guard very the, important. Guard the palace guarded in the mistress's absence. 
our presence oh. here knows that means that our mistress is gone. Where we do not know. Hmm. We may have an idea. Yeah. America the <laughs> I think we heard that she was frozen inside. Isn't that why we're kind of here to open yeah, the I fuck up? Many creatures in the state of <laughs> in a, in the frozen state, and if we attempt to care for them, mind you, we have the intelligence to not taunt the mistress's pet. Is that the Jabba one? Indeed. Hey, I didn't I made taunt it. With them, so I was trying saying. my best to be a bestie, and they were all worsties with me. That's not cool, dude. You are made of flesh. You being visible is all that is required to be a taunt. Well, I'm going to sit myself down and start taking a short rest if possible. <laughs> because... Taking the warlock approach, I see. <laughs> hey, I don't have anything on long rests. Or even short rests, really. I just need HP. <laughs> you need HP, yeah, yeah. So, as you kind of settle in, um, the uh, this iron lion decides, and it's obvious that it kind of thinks a little bit about this, and, nah, I will sit down and treat with this crew. And kind of li sits down on its haunches and its front paws laid over top of one another um, to look over or watch you as you take your your rest o over this next period of time. Um, and this gives you a chance actually to kind of get a bit better understanding of your surroundings. The the tower that you're in is kind of a marble statue, or sorry, mar marble stonework kind of uh, tower that inside here. But there's also large oak trees that extend up and kind of block the sky from the view of but you do see a couple of little glints of the orange and purple twilight sky above above um slightly cloud covered at the it's the it's that it's like that sunset where the uh sunset is just orange enough and the cat has the strange bend to the light that it paints the, the clouds purple above you um use ta the lion's tail just kind of um brushing across the ground and just behind it while you guys are taking yourselves a rest and, and go for it so scrags what the fuck <laughs> um don't put on the goblin voice it, <laughs> uh, it says they're they belong to the mistress my mistress you see, that's cute. cute. Uh, uh, very cute. However, if you ever watch all three of us go down again and giggle, I will come back from the dead and wring your neck in. <laughs> it's not my fault that you went looking for a fight where one wasn't necessary. I found... So I'm finding... Uh, I'm, I'm finding things. I, I turned to Dottie and I was like, permission to kill. <laughs> I, uh, I take out, I take out, draw out <laughs> the clothes. Draw, the iron golem, sorry, this iron lion, sorry, I should say, is, um, pulls his paw and sets it between you and Scrags, and pulls Scrags in against its torso. Protecting <laughs> it like a cum. You conniving, mischievous little fucking rat of a person. <laughs> Throwing blame around isn't going to help. Let's try and avoid it. And I'm going to take out my old traveler's clothes that I'm not using. And start attempting to make earplugs out of the cloth. Very good. All right. So while and you're a bit of the hempen rope, I guess. I, that'll definitely. And, and like earplugs that you, you know, you could tie some hempen rope to like, so that you could just like yank them out when you needed to kind of thing. Well, like just, you know, tying the cloth together with the hemp, with like fraying the hempen rope. Mm -hmm. However, I am able to do it. I will try and do it. Sure. You're quite comfortable with the hour of time to be able to do something. Um, um, 
Now is also a probably good time to mention I am pretty low on spells, so I'm not sure how useful I will be if we don't long rest, but you could long rest. We how long was the flight to this place? Would have taken you a couple of hours for sure. Uh, and really as the preparations you took will have taken most of your morning, you'll probably be in like a mid-afternoon kind of area or something to that effect. Morning, Jack. Well, morning for me. <laughs> um, I'm not horrible. It's just I have one first level, one second level, and I think two third levels. Oh, one of each. Gotta love that. However, no. <laughs> I haven't spent I'm the big stuff yet, but still. Then, uh, as you're doing that, um, as you're con contemplating this, the iron lines this you. It behooves you to perhaps do so with the pavilion. Taking a small rest after poor decisions is perhaps not a bad idea. But those who wish to treat with the mistress do not gain entry to the grounds until granted so. And wait in the pavilion until such time. Very well. If we have to queue up at the at the registry, that's, that's fine. We can rest there. So here's the question, though, I'm going to ask to Dottie and to Erebus, completely ignoring Scrags and whatever the fuck he's got himself into now. Um, looking at the pair of you going like, do we want to meet their mistress? Because I think the mistress they're talking about is completely different to the mistress we're looking for. I don't well, think it's so. Scrags' mistress, it should be the Vilma. Should be the same. Am I the only one thinking that this is a different person? I mean, like we're gonna go in here and be like, "Hello, I'm Itsy Bitsy Spider, and I'm Scrag's patron," and you're like, hmm. "That surprised <laughs> me, but I, I think it's a <laughs> Like we we walk in there and it's just like it's Scrag's in another trench coat with like a like a stool, <laughs> be like, "Hello!" I can always stab him. <laughs> you're not the DM ideas. <laughs> this is why we can't put in front of him, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Everything should be done in the DMs from now on. <laughs> Here's a good time to point out my bug. It says when the DM smiles, it's already too late. That's very true. Um, I can't show my mug for legal reasons. <laughs> I will say. So, where he is? The mistress normally and the creature will say is the iron and elegy will say sorry not elegy envy envy will say uh, i keep on calling him an uh, elegy her name is envy um today is the day okay uh anyway um envy says the entire palace <laughs> Sorry. It broke me too. Yeah, it's been missing. <laughs> which leads she has been missing, which leads to our presence here. So how do we find her? Um That is a good question. Uh Iron Lion friend. Do you have any? <laughs> uh have you even left this room in like a long time? I mean, you're here taking a short rest. You have a good chunk of time while you're making your earplugs to ask any questions you have. Yeah, I will ask him, what have you been doing this entire time that your mistress has been missing? I mean, I, are we not taking a long rest because Dottie needed all their spell slots back? Uh, if you're taking a long rest, then you guys said that you were going to go to the pavilion to do it and you haven't left yet. So until you tell me you're leaving, I'm not believing you. Oh, well then, fair. Okay, yeah, we're, so. we're going to go to the pavilion first, I think. Are you doing that right now, then? Um, I consider that makes the most sense, because Dottie is 
low, and I would like Dottie to not be low. So if yeah, I go low, can Dottie can heal me. <laughs> All right. Because apparently Scrags doesn't want to. <laughs> that little fuck. Anyway, um, you're welcome in advance. Oh gosh. <laughs> oh, um, we may be back. Uh, thank you, and that's it. And step out with you guys out into. Um, what is, like, you look out of this tower space, kind of look up to where you saw the the uh, Jabberwock kind of disappear behind the back of the palace, and seeing no evidence of anything um, in the sky, unusually anyway. You take a deep breath and you step back out into the garden that was nearly your graveyard just a few moments earlier. Um, and now can finally actually take in this space take in what actually exists here all the things that you are running through the bushes and such um particularly some of the bushes do not you didn't really notice this beforehand but they look like they take the form of various creatures bipeds and, and quadrupeds uh come to think of it there's a couple of bushes that aren't even attached to the ground small bushes human human form just kind of floating out in this area you do hear for the first time because you're not babbled by uh by this creature um a kind of a brook further uh further away from you uh in this palace area you do also hear a smell roses cow's lips um hyacinths and it's kind of just this vast aroma um array that just kind of uh, permeate this space um and it's quiet save for some light voices that you hear a little bit of music actually from a if we stab them in the chest they're not going to feel the rest of the pain <laughs> from a tent that a circular large circular tent almost looks like it's from the witch-like carnival over by shut the fuck up the front door your front gate to this uh, garden, which you totally skipped because you came in on cranes. What the balls? What you also notice, however, <laughs> is that there is three scorch lines going through all of this garden scape. One of them right beside the pavilion, the pavilion, that tent that was at the front of the, at the front gate. Turn to the two sane people in the party. You see that too, right? Yeah, we're not tripping, right? I mean, I'm not the most reliable source, but I do see it. Like, we didn't die during that fight, and we're just... I mean, we're talking rolls about the up, tent, um, right? You see rolls the up tent. imaginary sleeves. If I go in there, and that little fuck... And you went muted. <laughs> I'm gonna say... That is what we call censorship. Anywho, if I go in there, if I go in there, and they just look. That was a no. And my 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 mic disconnected itself, which is also very ironic timing. However, however, um, I will admit that Volrek has probably said in game the most asinine dis. Disgusting things, and he's like, "I'm going to kill that bitch. I'm going in there. I'm killing her." And this is exactly how I'm going to do it. <laughs> As you guys walk out into this garden, um, right nearby you happens to be a tall tree that has the most oddly colored fruit on it, golden and silver. They look like palms, like an apple of some sort, maybe a plum. But how high up? Uh, tall enough that you and Valric could easily be. Maybe not so much Dottie, without help, or Scrags without help. I have never heard of anything bad happening from eating a fruit, so I'm gonna. <laughs> Which one are you taking? Is there anything you randomly get close to, or do you have a color for preference, gold or silver? Ooh, I will take both. You will take one of both. All right, and which one do you eat first? I'm gonna give the silver one to Dottie and take the gold one for myself. All right. Did you take a bite? Yep. Dottie, do you take a bite? Are you insane? <laughs> Are you 
were insane. Oh, well, actually, I do just because I see Erebus going for it, but no. Erebus, <laughs> my dog. My All dog right. has also looked at you and was like, "Are right, this dude's an idiot?" Seventeen. <laughs> Seventeen didn't matter. I just wanted you to roll a d twenty. Um, <laughs> which one was it you took again? The silver one. The gold. The gold one. You took the gold the one. All right. As you do so, you taking a bite and uh, and eating it. Not much of an effect. But as you're walking, are you guys? And you guys are going over towards that tent, right? But as you're walking sure, and, and continuing sure. to choose, are you kind of continuing to chew? On this, it tastes delicious. Kind of like. Um, strange uh, plum flavor with a little bit of like, like goji berry overtones kind of kind of flavor to it. Um, get about halfway through it, and you start to become far more aware of the things around you. You notice smells of the water. You can actually smell the water. It's a long ways away from me. You can smell the water and the and the sense and kind of the churning freshness that comes from it. You can smell. You can hear the music that is being played, and it's being sung by creatures with non irregularly humanoid voices, almost goblin esque, but a little bit more nasally. Um, now, question: Is this heightening of the senses? Uh. Is he giving him a little bit of redness in in the eye? Yeah, is it it intoxicating (laughs) or is Is it it controlled? As you look around and are realizing that you have heightened awareness around you, you can see very clearly now why the door was locked and unable to be opened to the palace itself. There's some sort of a lock that is... There's this little emblem on the door. You're still a little ways away to tell from what it is, but it, it, it immediately it conjures the idea that something else is required to unlock the door other than a key. But it's a it long distance the blood of a child. It's a, it's a bit of a distance away. What you do have is advantage on wisdom saving throws for the next 24 hours. Ooh. These are... Which this you could have used stuff. when you were fighting the Jabberwock, but whatever. Those are charisma saving throws. <laughs> <laughs> Those were charisma saving throws. Mm. Um, the thing I had minus <laughs> two in, DM. <laughs> Stare. <laughs> I had a plus four and I was still failing. Yeah. yeah. It was the high DC. So you guys walk your way over towards that um, pavilion. And you're very aware of the fact that there's a number of people already inside here, Erebus. I do have to make you aware that Volwark is marching with a, an absolute passion of murder in his eyes. He is I going will, to I town. I will actually put my sh- hand on Volwark's shoulder and say, that's not the best time to go barging in uh, uninvited. You are... Slightly turn. We are here. Well, I'm here, Dottie's here, and Scraggs is here because of these carnival-esque bitches. True I'm enough, but you're not exactly the healthiest at the moment as I look at his burned body. <laughs> Very you're trying well. to call me ugly. Are you calling me ugly? <laughs> well, Erebus, you better wish. not be calling me ugly. You are curtsying, you are curtsying with flakes of fabric, so... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Literally like like a Tarzan covered barely. <laughs> they just uh, ripped t shirt. Yeah. Dak, listen, here, if you don't want the inappropriately timed ads to describe my music, then here's what you do. <laughs> you pull out a Twitch subscription and you scrap. Subscribe. Anyway, anyway, um, now I've had my little advertisement moment. Okay, but you guys still walk up to the tent. And you, with your fury, Volric, flap the wi- uh, flap it open, and are immediately greeted by an assortment of individuals. Um, three of them, sorry, seven of them, uh, in total, uh, include. Uh, and then in a corner, 
this um, a string quartet of badgers. I take it back. I love this place. <laughs> I take it back. I take it back immediately. Immediately reaching around a cello and just doing. And then Never mind. This place might not be that dangerous. And what you see is a bear. Uh, one of them is a bear talking. And they're all lounging bear around this. The seven creatures are lounging around this picnic table. Um, it's laden with teacups and emerald green finery and cloth. Um, two of the guests are currently motionless and silent. They're not moving at all. Um, but the other five are all in very spirited conversation um, about... Oh, hang on, I lost it. Like, dead not moving? <laughs> or... Like, dead, like, dinner moving? or <laughs> not, like, something's preventing them. And you, you see here is... Uh, Yeah. Um, I just read this. I lost my notes. And I, and I lost my notes. Um, okay. Oh yes. Oh yeah. And so they're uh, on the tea uh, at the tea top. Um, the on the tea table on the tea table. The bear is holding up this biscuit. Oh gosh, con yeah, conical coffee grid gifted a subscription to caffeinated arcade. Uh, conical uh, coffee. Oh, you are you are awesome. tier one sub to Thank you. Arcade. That's pretty awesome. Thank you, I hit the button. I was gonna give it to the person he's in chat, but it just <laughs> just kept me. That's awesome. That's why I'm not even in the chat right now. <laughs> it's all good. But you let the bear lift up the score and says the problem is, if you put the cream on top of the jam, then it t just spreads the jam underneath the cream. It just doesn't work as quite as well. And there, you can also see around this table there is this human cobbler. Thank you for the follow, Cubier Cubaris. Cubaris, 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 because smart. Cubaris. Okay. Anyway, you also see an elf. You see a. a a dwarf with a no head. It's definitely a dwarf body. And uh, another human. That, uh, one of the one of the humans that happens to be male and has really leather skin. The other one looks a little bit more put together. A little bit more um, a, 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 little, a little bit more fighter. She's got a uh, quill that seems to just po poise over this uh, parchment beside her. Um, you do see that the, 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 the human with the leathery skin has got this um, pumpkin kind of set on the ground beside him. Um, you also the elf there. Um, no, that's not what I'm saying. Uh, sorry, the, the dwarf and the is it says that um, it's just kind of gesturing with his shoulders. That's all he's doing at this point in time. Um, but they're having aggressively booby shaking. <laughs> Your mic has went to utter crap. I'm sorry. You put the gym on the bottom, then it actually has a chance to get some interest right now. I'm not I'm not hearing you, DM. You're not hearing me. Oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. It was just quiet. like the way you were you went very quiet all of a sudden, and very, I was like, quiet. oh? Oh, that was <laughs> Do you wanna... It was odd. All right, well, I'm back again. In any case, yeah, the elf is, takes the scone and says, yeah, but if you put the, uh, the jam on the bottom, like, straight onto the scone, then it, it then it absorbs the flavor straight in. You just put the cream on top to make sure it locks in that flavor. And then it just... That's a hair the side. <laughs> And meanwhile, the, dwar the dwarven body is kind of looking over to, uh, to, the, uh, to the bear and then looking back over the elf, nods to the elf, with his shoulders and just having this this in-depth conversation with the string music playing over in the corner of the pavilion as you all step in and they seem oblivious to the fact that you've walked into the pavilion turn to dotty <laughs> Tur turn to dotty i'm getting a badger as a pet so the world get... denied me a polinella i'm getting a badger <laughs> <laughs> 
the both of you go over to the string quartet. Uh, roll for me a history check. Boo, 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 I'm gonna boo, join in. I, I'm not a smart bean. You're joining them as well. Yes, I'm gonna. I'm gonna join in on the quartet. I'm gonna play music. Oh, okay. What are you He's playing? Gonna... A pan flute. Oh, for fuck. Awesome. Okay. I roll a natural one. Shit. That's an insight. <laughs> That's a twelve. A twelve in my I history. I still got an eight on a natural. So one. with an eleven and a. Tw That's awesome. If, on an eleven and a twelve. Oh, and Donnie's gonna jump in with the loot. Why not? You're a bard. Sure. Let's make this happen. Um. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> interesting point here. The music is unfamiliar to each of you, but the chord structure seems, well, to Erebus, it makes absolutely no sense at all. It's, you're expecting a, you're expecting intricacy and a fugue and counterpoint, and what you're getting is parallel fifths, and what you realize, Dottie, is, um, this is some fairly heavy-duty music, you get the sense that on other planets, it might be a little metal. And so you pull out your loose Shut and you the fuck. to Apocalyptica-style string quartet. Yes! I don't think this, you see, we need some otherworldly. Uh, Ervis stops other worldly. <laughs> and uh, looks at his pan flute and says, I don't think this was designed for that kind of music. <laughs> and the back Volvic lifts like, out his recorder. Like, <laughs> if you've seen the, 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 the people on, on uh, the, uh, YouTube, the, the two cellos guys, and how they just kind of basically lose all of their hair while and the, their bones. Oh, yeah, gone. the cello brothers. <laughs> How would just... you, what would you say to persuasion for an inspiring leader and um, basically singing check to go Best along with this? I would say roll for me a performance check and we'll find out. Uh, this is it singing and I would take that to immediately performance. Into advantage from your pamphlet, so... I really want to badger Pat. This is the rule of cool that's giving the consent to do this kind of thing. So, um, <laughs> um mm, I don't know. If, persuasion. So this is here, here's the thing. With I forgot I'm not actually me, proficient in it. <laughs> and 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 Windy J, um, if he were to ever rap, he would sound about as forty years old as you could possibly imagine. But I would be able to come up with some rhymes that people would be like, okay, he's trying, whatever, yeah, Eminem would still kill him, but whatever. Um, and that's kind of the sense that you get from Erebus' performance right now. I'm still going to give you the inspiring leader, because you guys haven't... Well, no, you have done that, so... Or have you done that, this, this long rest? Uh, it, so how no, it he didn't. Is... Because the last time he did it was before the fight we did in the with the witches, the witchy bitches. Okay, yeah, then you can probably run it right now then. So I, I will say that you um, spend some time doing some music and you guys, uh, Dottie, uh, actually Valric, what are you doing while these two are playing music with, the, with these badgers? Um, I just come to the realization that Erebus isn't a barb. I'm Nicki Minaj's stand, if you will. Uh <laughs> <laughs> and um I really badly want to steal a badger and I want my badger to become my best friend. <laughs> he just shoves one in a bag and then runs. <laughs> well, the badgers, Puts one over his head. Uh one of the badgers in particular um it seems to be playing almost at you, Volric. And it's it's the viola. It's the viola. <sighs> Who is kind of I would scream. That's the one I wanted. <laughs> the large violin like thing just kind of looking straight at you every once in a while and it just kind of digs a little bit deeper in so you could really hear that particular person or that particular badger. Um, it's obvious that this badger has some wherewithal. Beef. No. After a little bit, there's you, you're uh, of them playing at you. 
the only way that a badger would normally know to even respond to an audience is if it had something happening in behind the eyes. You start to notice, okay, hang on, these are not your typical badgers. These are like maybe like Amador, like a thing uh, that shouldn't normally be able to speak or shouldn't be able to normally think. You get the same kind of sense of intelligence. God damn it. I wanted it to be stupid so I could become its pal pal. <laughs> <laughs> um, and meanwhile, the people so at the table, two of them completely unmoved still so far. Um, the rest of them are still deep in the conversation about jam, cream, and scones. Yeah, I'm going to tell that lady that she needs to shut her mouth because clearly she's never had a scone in her life. How dare she? So, you know, if you put jam on the bottom, I'm going to murder her. I'll murder her in a minute, but uh, I'm just going to take a moment, silently appreciate the band, and then um, give them a little nod off, and then I'll head over to the rest, like the five people who are all having a good wee chin wag because, goddamn, I need to educate this girl right now. And it was a guy, a male elf, um girl <laughs> but what's interesting is he does not appear to be um flesh you get closer to him and his skin looks a little gray and a little solid and stone like <laughs> knock knock and, and he looks to you 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 tapping on this on the, in the middle of this conversation about uh, which jam would be best at this point in time? Um, he get, kind, of, kind of looks to you and says, um, he, yeah, he kind of looks to you and says, um, okay, so what, hello? Hi, you're so incorrect, and he, let me tell you why. <laughs> And he kind of sits back on his chair, very prim and proper. You can actually even hear stone on stone kind of tap as he crosses his arms and listens to your description. A scone should never have jam in the bottom because that's what the kids call a soggy bottom. And if you get a soggy bottom, no one's going to appreciate that shit. Everyone will laugh at you. And even when you come out with your basic Great British Bake Off looking ass with your soggy ass bottom, that's not going to work. That is going to be thrown in the bin, and it's going to be disgusting. Jam in the bottom, you're rancid. Second off, you hear the third adding from the bear, from the bear to the side. <laughs> Second off, those badgers are playing their fucking bad ussy back there, and you're not giving them the single iota of an attention. And I am going to lose my mind. They are playing their heart and soul out, and you're not giving them the slightest bit of attention. Watch. And this one says to you, "Oh, I see. You are common. That's good to know." Um, however, bitch, I'm the only thing <laughs> not common. <laughs> how, however, uh, what is normal in this place while we wait for the chance to meet with Zibilna is for her badgers, as you call them, to provide this uh, fantastic entertainment and. Come to think of it, there's two more. They're not badgers. But that one's particularly good. And put kind of gesturing towards uh, Dottie. And Dottie yeah, like those be... spreading it on the loot. Flying everywhere. My only thought process is, is that. Like, I love the idea that Dottie's playing, like, Darude Sandstorm on the loot, and everyone else is playing, like, heavy metal. <laughs> but, kind of, um... Kind of morphing the song into classical gas. <laughs> <laughs> or jizz, as the Star Wars people call it. But, um... What was it? I turn over to the bear, and I'm like, Can you believe this guy? Can you believe this stony boy? And How dare he? Across from the bear, you see this other human, kind of well dressed, um, with the one with the quill that was just kind of poised over top. And as she starts to speak, the quill touches to the paper and starts writing. Um, and she says to you, "They would be quite wonderful at a wedding ceremony." Oh, I, like I take a step back. Just not mine. You all have something. 
fair. Very fair point. You all have something wrong with you. The G wants the Bilna to fix. And the dwarf body that is headless looks to you and does the nodding thing at you. Uh, so I'm going to take a hazard farmer, guess that you've lost your beard. I point to the dwarf. <laughs> the farmer. Ah! Yeah. No, we do actually have all something kind of we're waiting for. Um, we've got, I've got this thing that's eating my livestock. I kind of want it to stop. And then the noble says, I'm, I'm looking to regain my form. Um, the dwarf just kind of looks to you and says, um, or just kind of stops. Says nothing. A couple of times. And then just kind Is of it like, Morse code? Then shrugs. And the bear says, um, <laughs> and the, ba the bear says to you, I kind of want to be able to eat fish again. Mm -hmm. And the noble no that, going, that but... has this qu the quill that's writing. I'd rather not get married if I don't have to. Huh. Completely off topic. Cute. Um. Cool. But you, there's also two other people sitting at this picnic table that have not moved an inch or a millimeter since you arrived. What about those two? Point to them. And Bear says, Honestly, it's not really certain. They were here when we all arrived. That one looks like it's from a completely different place. Um, I, I don't know. I, they've been here forever. And they've never moved. Apparently, they don't need food. They don't even pee. No peeing, you say? There must be something wrong. And I look over. <laughs> Do they look stone-like or frozen? They kind of like... They're not stone-like, but they're frozen in and completely immobile. Um, roll a hmm. history check. Brill! A thing that I'm shit at! <laughs> Bonk. Fourteen. Um, you've heard of petrification, but you've not necessarily seen it. Hmm. And it kind of gets the sense that it might be something like that, at the least. And well, thinking about this now, perhaps a little bit of leaf seems to be forming on some of them. They're turning into Amador. Seeing as um, my singing is not no. <laughs> fantastic, I'm going to go investigate this myself. And sure. Does this have anything to do with dryads in any way? Um, you're looking at it, and uh, so looking specifically at these two creatures that are frozen, one of them looks to be a halfling, the other one looks to be like a fairly large orc. Um, probably at one point in time was in a fairly important orc. Um, the, like full orc? Like full on orc, okay. the whole works. Um, but he, uh, yeah, so these two creatures are definitely frozen, so kind of looking over them, um, and thinking a little bit more towards, actually, roll for me a basic intelligence check, I'm going to say. Okay, 14. <laughs> okay, yeah, it's, it's tough to tell. With a 14, you're going to be able to kind of connect the idea of petrification to... The words that you heard the hags say, being frozen in their letters, things being frozen. I will take out the letter and try and find that phrase. <laughs> okay, I gotta get, make me go flip through my papers. I'm sorry. Why? Don't whatever. I'll get over it. You'll just have to pay. Goodbye. While you do Bye. that, Bye. I'll keep. Yeah. Uh, I'll distract them with my sick, hot, dangling looks, a.k.a. I'm going to read the fuck out of this elf. Be like, I'm common. You look like you've just pulled out of the go oh, like gosh. the bargain bin of a Walmart. How dare you speak to me like that? <laughs> and 
Uh, yeah, okay. She'll say something to you here in a moment. I'm just looking for it. <laughs> da -da, da -da. Um, that is right, there you go. So here's one. It was a letter that uh, you got that you picked up in Loom Lurch. Um, that's that was addressed. Well, that was in um, Skibatha Nightshade's home, Granny Nightshade. Um, saying in it, it includes, must I remind you that we need a u the unicorn's horn to free creatures from the cauldron's time freezing magic? It's not enough to know their true names, you know. Of course, my creator so can the someone else finds the horn and uses it exactly for that purpose. Um, that's the thing we needed the unicorn's horn for. <laughs> you know, Arabes. Well, and we're not Arabes. done yet because there's still more letters. Just gotta find them. Here we go. <laughs> if you break a unicorn's horn, it can truly save all the world's problems. If we all look at Erebus and are like, hmm, interesting. <laughs> well, interesting. going back to it, you also kind of connect all the different places where it says cauldron as well. And so, um, even now, an outside force promises to rid us of the whole stinking lot. What is important is that the cauldron remains safe. Yeah, we just that one just the letter that was found <laughs> at Motherhorn. You just found that letter the other day. Uh, Erevis will say, perhaps we just need to destroy this cauldron. Yeah, 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 two seconds, babe. So, how dare you think that you could <laughs> continue going on? Yeah, she'll actually, uh, he will actually respond and say, oh, I meant no offense. Common is a noble pursuit for some? Ah, mm, mm. not me though. And oh. you see, when I look at you and I think, mm, ratchet, basic, which peasantry. <laughs> Are you, you're from Wesmia, is that right? Yeah, <laughs> yes okay. I am. <laughs> okay. And he'll, he'll look to you and say, um, you're definitely not Earthian. Not what? The Earthian. You see, the, Sir. that one there, and he points towards the dwarf, um, and I, we're, we're from a realm called Earth. And in, uh, on Earth, while nobility affords you the ability to have power, common folk are the ones who provide. Hmm. So you all learn how to overuse your vowels. That's very cool. However, um, where I'm from, if you call someone common, it's considered a massive insult. So if we do it again, I will have your knees. I understand. Good, great. Now we do. So, Erebus, what were you saying? <laughs> well, we might be able to just destroy this cauldron and free everything, though that's probably easier said than done. And I don't know what other monstrosities they'd have un 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 locked up in there. The cauldron. The cal Are you talking about the lightning thingy back at the castle? The thing that almost bonked a couple people a couple times? No. The cauldron in the notes. Apparently it's here. Somewhere. Right. Um, <laughs> squints. He doesn't understand. <laughs> and at about this point in time, Dottie, uh, the Badgers kind of um, kind of start doing the final cadence. And, <clears throat> like, we're stopping now. Beethoven-esque ending. No. Now we stop. Seriously. Now. And just, they're, they're just doing whatever they can to try to get you to get out of this absolute jam that you are currently in. Oh, gotcha. I was <laughs> hogging the spotlight. Well, I'll go around and fist bump each of the batters. <laughs> <They're laughs> they are absolutely sweating straight down their snout, down the black line of their face. Um, and like the fur is matted underneath their armpits. And and one of them speaks to you and says, it's, it's, it's been a while it's, since we've had that kind of whew, water. 
Suggest suggest that they come with us, Dottie. Suggest that we come with us and we can have a band at all times, Dottie. Go on, you can do it. So, I have a proposition for you. <laughs> 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 um, the red is just accompanied by a horde Like of... I just have a bunch of badgers always following look, me. <laughs> look, but this is the thing. You know that battle music that we have? Boom, <laughs> badgers. Be canonical. Mm -hmm. Boom, badgers. <laughs> <laughs> like, I can have Volk go, blah, and it'll be canonical sense. It's <laughs> awesome. Um... Are you actually going to say that to them? Oh, absolutely. Please. Yes! <laughs> All right. Uh, so one of them looks at you and says, Appreciate the offer, but uh, we're kind of supposed to, you know, say, this is our job, really. Boo. We're happy with it. Boo. I'll pay you in drugs. <laughs> um, no. No. Uh, our patrons have been pretty good by us. Uh, as they keep, 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 keep. <laughs> We'll get you all the drugs, hooker, and rock and roll you can ask for. <laughs> and really, they, they are, we're going to get you some. <laughs> there's a blow. <laughs> and they really are quite kind. In fact, they provide us with all of the mushrooms that we want, so we're fine. Oh, Dottie, Dottie, they're already closer. providing. <laughs> Dottie literally said, "Bring the hookers and booze." <laughs> <laughs> this little half like, little pink hair. <laughs> you guys are lost. It. <laughs> She's been All in right. the Feywild for a while. <laughs> true, actually. <laughs> <laughs> so, during during this, I assume we're waiting here. This is the pavilion? Uh, this is the pavilion, yes, that you are here at. So this is where you <sighs> intended, at any rate, uh, to um, to take your long rest. If this is where we're resting, then I'll start doing the... That's weird. The oh, I can't see blocks. anyone anymore. No. Oh, I'll fix oh, it. Oh, there we go. It's me. Uh, you manhandling us. Thing thing oh, there we go. Ah! Nope, you can't, okay, I can't do it. Fine, I tried stuff and it didn't, and I failed. It's okay, I, I failed. Uh, anyway. I'm smiling, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, in any case, oh, actually, I know exactly what I did. I'll fix it later. Um, but the, so you guys are going to settle in here, and Erebus, what is it you're, you are doing now? I am going to make my uh, earplugs now. All right, making your earplugs. What is going on? All right, there we go. Making your welcome back to the Windy Broke Everything Corner, where we yeah. have your host, <laughs> Windy. Uh, in any case, um, so you guys can settle in here, and and actually now that the um, badgers have actually stopped for that uh, playing music, the others are kind of starting to stretch out a little bit as well. Well, maybe not today, says the bear. Maybe not today. And just um, lets out this little, this bear go, kind of, kind of a sound as he kind of um, uh, relax, stretches himself, uh, self out to relax. Corners blind again. He kind of walks over to one of the corners and kind of curls up Wait. and sets himself up as if he's about to hibernate. Wait, 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 wait. Where are you going? To sleep. <laughs> yeah. Why, though? Is she, like, off hours now? Like, what's the crack? No, we just wait here until she lets us in. Wait, who? How long exactly have you been waiting on? Uh... Today's Sunday, if that helps. And Obviously. actually, for you, uh, for Volric, in your, first of all, I, there's elven days in, in Wesmia, so there is no Sunday. But... <laughs> However, um, you start to realize, I actually don't know what day it is. I haven't seen a sunset for easily an elven day, if not longer. There wasn't sunsets in Thither, and there wasn't sun in Hither. This has just been one very long day. I, I have not be no surprised. idea what day it is. 
And the bear kind of looks back to you in this with the exact same kind of bewildered expression that you guys realize are now coming over is coming over Valric's face. Bell, bear looks back. Oh, time is a weird soup. How many times have you slept here then? Kind of picks up his claws. I don't know. That many times, huh? Well, I don't know, actually. I have enough claws, I'm sure. One, two, three, but I can count. I just don't know how long I've been sleeping here. How long have you been sleeping? It kind of looks over to the elf, um, and to the, the one that called you common, uh, and looks over to the elf and says, Bitch. Come to think that I don't know how long I've been here either. But it's never mind. It's no never mind. It's simply when Zabilda can be treat with us, she will treat with us. Mm -hmm. Question. How do you know when Zabilda's going to come in and be like, Hey, it's your turn now. Uh, I suppose she would send for us. Has anyone been right. sent to before you were here? Not since we've gotten here. Just assume uh -huh. that the person that was before us might have actually even been with these two, um, the, this, the frozen ones. I'm just looking to solve that issue first. And you get the sense from each of them as they respond that they don't feel put off by the time. Well, this is like maybe they, they, it's almost as if their their immediate perspective is that they haven't been waiting that long. They just don't remember how long it has been that they've been waiting. Okay, this good place is gonna fuck up my brain even more than it already has. Let's go. Like, <laughs> Bicees, have fun waiting. I'm not doing that. Let's go. Let's go. Drags, Dotty, drags, Scrags, drags. Now, before you do that. Wait, what is that the long rest? Yeah. Before you do oh, that. Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, you all kind of settle in, and they all kind of take their own spots. Um, the dwarf without the head. Simply slumps back in the in the in the chair that he was in. Um, the farmer he actually just kind of rests his head onto the picnic table, and uh, that's actually the first time. As you watch them all kind of settle in, some of them basically leaning onto the picnic table. It's the first time you guys actually pay attention to what's with these teas and the, t the tea and scones. And there's this little package wrapped up on the table too. What does the package look like, Wendy? Um, does it look murderous? There's and... actually two of them. Oh god. We all love a murderous package, don't we, folks? <laughs> Ayo. When you look at when you look at it, Valric, One of them says, um, to the red brands. What? <laughs> That's odd. Picks up instantly. <laughs> Tears open paper, hands note that says two red bands, two dotty, or someone else who I think can read. Like. <laughs> Alright, so I gotta read something here real quick because I didn't read this properly beforehand. I thought. So I anyone but Scrags, I'm essentially giving this to. Just an FYI because I don't think Scrags can read. <laughs> Dottie will read it. Okay, there it is. Um, so as you open it up and read it, and uh, read the note on the inside, um, what you see, uh, Vulric, inside, is this, strain, is this uh, kind of long, uh, elongated metal spike of some sort um, with a little chain, with a hook on the top of it and a chain that kind of comes off of it with a, another smaller uh metal rod of sorts um it, it's about and actually I, I i said this big i should actually say it's more like this big and then the little the little the chain with the rod on it um and it says uh it, it just simply sits there and is ready but dotty reading the note you see um written in a language do you speak draconic by chance i don't think so 
okay, then it's written in a language that you don't understand. But what you do understand is in common the name Sir Talavar written in the bottom corner as the signature. Mm -hmm. And, and Dottie is the know. only person who's currently on the stream right now who might recognize who that is. Yeah. Um, Erevis, do you read Draconic by chance? Mm, I read just about anything else. Mm, I'll I'll look it over, but I only speak Dryad, Elvish, Sylvan, and Common. <laughs> I'm just looking up Scrags for you right now. Uh, Scrags does not read that. Okay. Okay, I'm back. Sorry, I heard package being in Draconic. That's it. Yep. Yes, it is. It's in Draconic. Uh, no one knows how to read your comic. Am I right? No. None of the I can switch you. out comprehend languages for something in the morning, but that's about well, it. Well, comprehend languages is also a ritual, I think, right? It is a ritual. Casting? Um, with bard stuff, I probably do. Yeah. Bards do get ritual casting. Yeah, so you could probably ritually cast it if you wanted to. Okay. I'm trying to remember what level spell is mm. that. First. I will use my last first level slot. <laughs> All right. Well, you do, if you ritual cast, you don't use a slot. Oh shit! I forgot. Sorry, it's been a while. Right. Yeah, you do, but you just spend ten minutes plus the additional time of comprehend languages to cast it. Got so, it. Okay. In the meantime, Volric, what are you doing with this uh, with this thing? You just I'm letting it sit in the box. It. All right. I'm going to inspect it, pack it up, give it a wee twirl, give it a wee, like, like you know, if I had the wee monocle that can zoom in, I would be doing that. <laughs> All right, so just doing some inspection and not actually doing anything else with it. Um, it does, it appears as though it could be some form of a, you know, it's roll an intelligence check. <laughs> Oh, uh, just flat intelligence. Yeah. Great. It's so hard to tell what this is. <laughs> He's stupid in this episode. He has no idea where he is. <laughs> I mean, he got, did get smacked around by a Jabberwock, so it's, so it's you know, storyline makes sense. Fair point. Um, Fair the, point. Dottie, your spell, your ritual casted spell um, subsides after Valric basically kind of gives up on it and just kind of shoves it back in the box. If you'd rolled in that one, I would have made you do something with it. Um, but yeah, all didn't. Fuck this thing. <laughs> and yeah, you just put it back in the box. And Dottie, at the end of it, it kind of the it, the text on the uh, contraption kind of shimmers and kind of morphs into your favorite language. And you are able to read. Many thanks. May fortune smile on you. Yours, and then in common. Talavar. I cast a spell for this shit. <laughs> you hear Dottie <laughs> say under her breath. <laughs> what is it? It just says, warm regards. It would be nice if you were here to help out. <sighs> you guys don't remember Sir Talavar. I wasn't. I wasn't there. Yeah. Erevis, I think you were trapped with him. The little dragon fellow. That's right. You, you were. So there was a little pink pseudo dragon that you were trapped in the birdcage with at uh, at Slackjaw's place. Oh my God! Uh, yeah, <laughs> he had a little monocle and a ridiculously curly mustache. This pseudo dragon, um, and a slightly um, uh, uh, the attitude that gave you the air of nobility, um, thickly laced with charlatan. Yes. <laughs> So him and Shimo got along brilliantly. Good, good, I can actually. already imagine. Rather, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. As soon as she said mustache, I was like, Shimo would try his very best to be his best friend. <laughs> yeah, but Shimo tries to be everybody's best friend. Um, true, true. <laughs> can I look at the contraption? Does it say what, what the hell that that thing does? I will let you roll an Arcana check. Okay. Why don't no I not get an Arcana check? Because you didn't know it. <laughs> Okay. Since we are long resting anyway, I'm gonna use 
Oh wait, no, I can't bar the inspiration myself. Sorry, I'm still wearing this stuff. Never mind. That's right. <laughs> Oh, too bad on the second dice. So there would have been a nice on the other side. Yeah, you, you do get the sense there's something can I, about it, but that's as much as you can tell. Can I help them with my arcane knowledge? Well, are you saying that there's something arcane about it? Come on, Dottie. <laughs> Meta game with me, baby. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, Valor baby. Are you, like, Valric, by this point in time, you've given up, and so you're either um, going to bed... However, Volver goes to bed, which you get to explain. Like this, and then he falls back, and then he levitates slowly off the ground. But <laughs> yeah, that's what I was looking for. Okay, cool. Um, can I tie it to? But chaos, if you mention it, is it too late? Like, <laughs> um, I really want that. That's funny. <laughs> you want that? That's funny. That badly, I will let you tie the chaos. In Yay! Because I wanted to hit Fire the button ball. anyway. So there Fire it is. Ball. I'm gonna laugh if I fireball this entire tent. <laughs> oh my god. I'm gonna laugh if she turns into a pot of plant. Or a Do you know how bad I've been waiting for that? <gasps> Within the next <laughs> minute, though. Oh, uh, so unless you cast them a damaging spell. Kill something. <laughs> yeah. Alright, nonetheless, kill that's that funny elf. With your tides of kill chaos. that elf. Um, it's so tempting. <laughs> you immediately recognize that. Whatever it is, it's a wind. It's a chime of some sort that you can. The small rod can be used to hit the other one, and I mean, it's a nat twenty with a twenty six. Um, you definitely, without getting the right into the details, you do know. Sir Talavar wouldn't just give you a trinket for shits and giggles. He would give you something that you have the potential to use. He's from the Summer Court. He's familiar with the Feywild and how it works. He would give you something that could potentially be very useful. He also left it in a place. Can you describe this and thing? He did. I, Were you not paying attention, Erebus? I'm really sorry. <laughs> That's all good. That's all good. Can I say that Dottie just spends time with it, just trying to figure out what exactly ding, 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 it ding. does? Sure. Um, Do you spend an hour with a, it? Something, uh, without, not, without an identify spell or something of the like, you don't necessarily know exactly. I, can, like, I can't give it exactly to you. What I can give you, though, is that it is definitely um, arcane. And it is definitely going to be useful to you. You just don't necessarily know when. I have an idea of what it could be. I don't really. I have an idea of what it could do, but... Uh. Could I pressure Scrags to cast Detect Magic? Oh, yeah. Scrags could do that, can't you? Let's go find out. <laughs> Doesn't Scrags also I'm have so Identify? I'm so mad because I want to know. <laughs> Doesn't Scrags also know Identify? Scrags might not have the materials for Identify. Uh, but and Scrags has not oh, uh, oh. cast a dunk. Um, Scrags can cast like a Uh, no, they. You're right. I don't think they can. Um, they all they got is detect magic. Um, oh no. Which Goodness. he can cast ritually. Um, and I'm not changing his list for him. So I'll say he can spend some time and cast and cast uh, detect magic for you. Um. Cool. So, and doing so, at the end of his ca ritual casting, um, he'll tell you that uh, it is a uh, ab it's, uh, has a an aura of abjuration around it. So it deals with either things that block or protect in some way, shape, or form. Hmm. <laughs> the just yells out, "All right, who needs protection?" Um, always seems to be the one getting hit. I'm also the one with the lowest AC out of game. <laughs> is yours the lowest? Is it? What AC is yours? Mine's a 14. Dottie, just in case I don't Mine's remember Mine's a 15. That. But Dottie... Do me a favor, make sure you write down that silver apple in your inventory. Oh. oh, yeah. Yes. Um... I'm gonna just take a short rest, honestly. I do not really need a okay. long rest. 
Is that, and what, are the, what about the rest of you guys? Are you guys taking long rests? I am taking a full long rest because I already hit the button for long rest and I feel it would be a bit scummy if I didn't. <laughs> That's honorable. I appreciate that. Okay. All right. So with all that, ding, 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 ding. Yeah. Ooh, nice. Max dice on that hit. Nice, too. That's got to feel good. So you're taking your long rest, too, then, Erebus? Or just, just a short rest? Just a short rest, and then I'll just a short make okay. a light conversation, maybe think about ways that I could get to the winter court. <laughs> well, and in light that regard, the... I mean, everybody else is taking a long rest, even the people in the pavilion. I'll take a long rest if everybody's... Okay. But even then, my long rest is... Four hours. Than everybody else is, so I'll be doing true. something. So, you, like, you're still going to wake up earlier than everybody else. Is there anything in particular you want to do? Uh, if I've made waiting? all the... Made, like, eight earplugs, uh, I'll make sure it's in everybody's pack and everybody knows where they, they are. Okay. Um, I will... I guess search around the pavilion and see if anyone wants to trade anything or have any uh, loose arrows I could take or anything like that. Roll from the investigation. If you testing. say loose arrows and my quiver is at four, I am going to kill you. I am not stealing your arrows. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's inside uh, his investigation. Uh, it's seven. I rolled a seven in... Okay, fair enough. So with the, with the seven, um, I mean, you have enough time. You'll be able to see a couple of things. Um, well, let's try this on for size. Um, yeah, okay. So uh, going around this space, you kind of start to take notice of all the things that all these other people have. So there's that quill that is now actually writing on the parchment, uh, on, on a parchment as the human that that it's connected to is snoring it's actually writing z z z z z z z z z z z z z z z z z z z all the way across this parchment um you can see uh you could see the um yeah you can see that uh the farmer that large pumpkin that he had sitting beside him um, the pumpkin is just kind of sitting there. She kind of look over around the pumpkin, and at one point, then all of a sudden, the pumpkin shifts and turns, and you can actually see like a jack o' lantern face with um, dagger like teeth, and it kind of goes out to like mimic like to come and chomp at you as you get too close to it. Uh, roll a deck save. Oh my goodness! Eleven. I'm yeah, terrible. that's enough. That's enough. It's a pumpkin. It doesn't have legs. So you're able to pull, you're able to pull away. Like okay, don't go near that thing, and then just kind of walk away from it. Um, you do see that um, uh, yeah, Balric is levitating, and <laughs> seems to be somewhat normal for them. Apparently, uh, you've seen this before, so sure, just still kind of unusual to get used to, and you kind of almost wish that you could levitate while uh, trancing because. Um, then you wouldn't have rocks underneath your butt while you're trying to do so. Um, if you had Dottie has air the, chassis passer, oh, Dotty handed the. Wouldn't have this uh, Dottie has placed the uh, the tuning thing, the the the, the rod, to right beside uh, Volric. Um, Volric's sleeping, so he can't take it yet. Um, oh. So, that, Dottie, you can't hand it to him because he was unconscious. I mean, you can put it on his chest if you wanted to. Just, like, floating there on his chest. <laughs> <laughs> he raises off the ground and you put it on and he slowly yeah. goes back down. And it's like, picks it up. He goes back uh, up. Sorry, hang on. Down, goes with, back down. With your Arcana check of a 26, I will say you'll know that it's not an attuned item. Oh. That it just works. That's almost worse because I don't know what it does. I know. <laughs> I was hoping the attuning would. Only a one-use item then. Anyway, uh, um, if that's all I find, I'll just uh, 
I'll just keep watch, occasionally peek out, and make sure the Jabberwock's not gonna descend on this place. And so you keep your watch. Um, you're looking out to the uh, outside of the pavilion, kind of still with your heightened awareness around you. This the light hasn't changed. It's still orange. It's still purple hued cloud above you. It is. There are still uh, gold and silver apples on trees. You do notice that some of the um, bushes uh, are, that seem to be kind of taking various forms of halflings and and goblins and fairies even that are just kind of floating in the air um just they don't seem to shift or change at all you do hear the uh, the brook a little distance away um it smells fresh but it's quiet and after a few hours hey there renetta good to see you in the chat after a few hours you are jolted back into the pavilion by the badgers who have now gotten woken back up, picked up their cellos and violas and violins, and started in on this very joyful, um, almost um, Carly Rae Jepsen kind of style of up, upbeat, uplifting sound. Um, Call me maybe. Uh, yeah, kind of. <laughs> no copyright infringement. And. Um, <laughs> The, but they've now, as they do that, the other people start to waken up a little bit as well. And likewise, do Dottie and Bulric. Dottie, how uh, fast would you have woken up to the music? Like, would you have jolted uh, awake, or...? Dottie's a pretty intense sleeper. Okay. <laughs> it's all those times that they've got blackout drunk. It probably didn't help Absolutely. that. Absolutely. So... <laughs> Back in the Halfling Village. <laughs> All you see is uh, all you see is Erebus uh, going like this, and uh, his his smiles on his face, and he uh, says, "Another day, just been waiting on you." All. When the badger starts to play, and like one particularly loud note, probably within the first couple seconds, where it's like, and, like Balrog will instantly wake up. And like he was floating, he'll fall, and he'd be like, "Fuck, ow!" and <laughs> roll over, and he'd be like, "What the fuck?" and like pick up the item the daddy gave him, and he's like, "Someone drop this." No one's taking it. Okay, I'll take it, and then <laughs> put it in my pocket. All right, put in uh, your inventory. Unknown chime. <laughs> Wind chime of totally not Murderville. <laughs> okay. All right, and you guys have your space and time. Remember, kids, Windows doesn't like you. It hates you. In fact. It hates you. It wants you to give up your life. <laughs> uh, because. So, orders order of today: uh, find a way into. The Palace of Heart's Desire, while not getting murdered by a Jabberwock, and find the cauldron. Am I wrong at all? Let's do and this! Actually, as you say that, um, the elf inside this pavilion will say, Is that what that noise was last night? Eh? Oh, well, the Jabberwock. Not yes. long before you arrived, I mean, we were in a heated debate about jam. But <laughs> squint. There was a loud <laughs> Oh, it was just us dying, and you stayed it's, in here. It's, it's probably fine. best that you did not investigate. I'll say that. Okay. Um. Fair enough. Uh, roll for me a perception checker. Right. All right. With that, with a four wait. Four there's something that I just remembered. Okay, yeah. Where's the lion? <laughs> the lion is still back in the tower that you left behind. Thank God. I thought he was like following us around. I was like, if I have to deal with Scrags being an asshole and then this lion being like, my baby, I will <laughs> end up killing this thing a lot quicker than it. This party would get a TPK simply because of me trying to murder Scrags. <laughs> Alright, so... Um... 
Okay, so, um, yes, uh, you guys, as, as you're kind of having this conversation, um, well, really, you guys could just decide what you want to do next. Go for it. Are you guys going to head out to the garden to go to the doors? What are you guys going to uh, gonna check some more stuff out around? What are you guys going to do? We, we were pretty distracted. Lion, anything about the weird door. The we lion? We were pretty distracted about yeah. the... And by the carnival being here. Thank God it isn't the carnival, but it was our carnival, so. <laughs> Alright, so. You guys can head back towards that tower that you met the Iron Lion in. And s stepping in, uh, Scrags immediately does a quick little bow, and the lion bows back to Scrags. For fuck's sake. Well, at least someone ex respects you. <laughs> Let's, uh, <laughs> get going. <laughs> and the lion says, you come back to treat with us again. Of course, and I'll bow and have the same issue as before, but try, and, back. try and keep it off my face. I curtsy. Slightly bigger than the one before. This time, the lion curtsies back with his hindquarters. How the hell? <laughs> <laughs> Dog sit. I only like, said that for burf. that facial expression. <laughs> that was the only reason. I said How that. the hell? <laughs> Dottie tries to bow, but kind of stumbles a little bit. Because honestly, she's a little hungover after the heavy metal fest. And the, they're too yeah, small. Yeah, the head bows back to you. This is. And how do you treat with us today? I have a question. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> what have you been doing this entire time while your mistress has been away? When there is no threat the size of a dragon, my task, sorry, our task, mine and my counterpart, ours and our counterpart, uh, ours and our counterpart is to ensure that those who do arrive at the palace seek their audience appropriately at the pavilion. That is our only task. I'm not sure about this, but uh, it seems to me that if your mistress is in danger, you should be eager to protect her. That is not our say. Created for one purpose, huh? Indeed. Could you help us get into the palace? For that, you need the crown key. And what does this So we couldn't like? just crown break key? a lock now. And he kind of. You see a lion actually roll their eyes. Yes. Zabilna created the crown as a, as a key that guests can use to reach certain areas of the palace in her absence. Um, there's one of silver needles and one of golden roses. Huh. Silver needles? Yes, and one of them placed on the correct brow of the correct guardian will open up the door that the, the, the visitor wishes to enter. Which is Pulls out which of time. Us, envy, envy or wrath is the correct guardian, one cannot say. Pulls out chime. Would it look anything like this, or nah? Uh, we are unfamiliar with that device. Great. <laughs> Pitch it back. <laughs> Where are these needles and flowers? Or roses? In a haystack, somewhere. Probably. We are not certain. <laughs> At the moment, it is possible that the last was left with wrath. Fuck. And as you see, actually, roll an insight check. Um, as you uh, Erebus, I think, has the highest insight. So go for that. Uh, I don't know about God that. God damn it. I don't oh, could be wrong. I do. I who has, in, who has proficiency in insight? Does anybody have proficiency in uh, insight? Who has... No, okay, has no. the highest insight. Yes, insight is wisdom. Yeah. 
All right. Well, then that answers that. Um, let's. My insight's about... four, so I don't know what that is let's... for Erebus. Uh, mine's two. Okay. Well, then. Oh, and, cool. Then, Valric, you go ahead and roll insight then. Boom, baby. A boop. For the seventeen nice. on your insight. Um, you get the sense immediately that when Envy, when this lion speaks the name Wrath, there's this scowl, like the little lines of the snout of the lion kind of creak up and form this little, almost a snarl while they're saying it. I'm going to presume that your Wrath friend isn't exactly your best companion. We are linked, despite our desires. I'm going to presume, and I'm going to hazard a guess with this, Raph is very angry. Angry is not an appropriate term to describe Raph. How about Unless Raffle? you seek its name out, say it out. <laughs> However, hmm. it, they believe themselves more important than we. Simply because... Looks, this is bigger than that. <laughs> looks over at two scrags. Interesting. <laughs> no wonder someone can get upset by someone acting like that. So, we have stare, to seek out this stare, graph stare. in order to proceed because he has the last silver needle. We're not certain where the crown is. But having one would provide you with the access granted by Zibit. And to confirm, there's no way that we can break in. Like, you've never had to deal with someone sneaking in before. We could certainly give it a try. Well, and That's once the asking. crown is transformed into its golden form, either guardian can wear it without being banished. Uh, certain doors inside the palace become unlocked, or locked, depending on which guardian wears the golden crown. Mm. Meaning, it's a game of rotation, and I hate that. I hate those games, <laughs> I love games. Shut your mouth, I rat. stab him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> I cast silence on him so you can never speak for the remainder of the campaign. Um, silence targeted at his vocal cords. <laughs> silence targeted at his face. It's better what? at blowing stuff up than figuring things out delicately. I might yeah, be a rogue, but I'm style. not exactly a quiet rogue. We're called the red brands, not the super sneaky, totally cool brands. We believe that it's still best for you to be provided safe passage by way of the crowds. Well, if we do I'm not gathering this correctly, you that are saying time. we need the crowns to progress, and you don't know where they are. The last time we had a crown placed on our head was With very Raph. long ago. And where do these people get the crowns? These other guests? If I recall correctly, they did receive it from Rath, which is why I suggested you look there. Okay, we Wait. will go to Rath. That is, that is our goal. Going to Rath. Hmm. I have a very the of the gardens, feeling. Both Rath and I will take care of you. Sorry, say that again. Take care of the gardens, and both Wrath and I will take care. And both Wrath and we will take care of you. Cracks knuckles. Now it's the ranger's time to shine. <laughs> it's my time to shine, baby. Take it's my turn. Just plant some flowers. <laughs> Plants, flowers, right, so animals. The of the of the tower. And back out to the garden with the with the trees and the bushes that say I have human form. I am looking. My eyes are out for any sign of the Jabberwock. Uh, there, that is actually an interesting point because I will say that as you were stepping out, 
um, you would have heard the beating of wings over top. Can't see through the trees in this tower that MB sits in, but you could hear definitely hear the effects of something large flying overhead before you back step in, out. So back in, you back stop in. yourselves from stepping out until and listening out and no further sounds. So you look out and about, and I'm. It's pretty clear there's nothing in the sky. Seems to you that the Jabberwock has gone off for whatever it's going to do for the day. You'd think it would go farther around and maybe go to a different place, preferably. <laughs> Erebus, I really do not understand why, at this point, nothing in this world goes in our favor. So the fact that you think it ever will is surprising. Honestly, I think it's my fault at this point. Mm. So, anyway, that's about trade. <laughs> Quick, fair enough, I'll take that for sure. Um, but for, the, for you guys, just as a heads up, I do have a little bit extra time this morning available to me. So if it's okay by you guys, I'm going to push just a little bit longer. I'll, unless you have to say, no, I've got commitments. Fine by me. Okay. I have a commitment at half free, which is in half an hour. Perfect. So. I will beat that commitment then. We will have no problem. Great. Okay, so <laughs> carrying on into the garden... Um, again, with all the trees and all of the uh, creatures around, sorry, all of the frozen hedge-like creatures around you, the smells of cow's lips and roses and hyacinths in your in your um, nasal passages, um, you have a look around to see anything else untoward and, or unusual, and you do see, of course, the tower that you are just leaving. There is another tower similar to it across the garden. And you'd have to pass um, probably the stream or the brook that you keep sniffing out, Erebus, in order to get to it. But you could get there. Question. Answer. Um, it's really just a thing of, uh, or, oh, sure, fuck's sake. Valric is going to keep um, his eye out for anything in the garden that looks slightly off. So he can go in and fix it, you know, like a gardener. So, going in, you do still see the large, long, black scorch marks that have stretched out. So, you've got lots of fixing you could do in that spot. How would you fix in that spot? Um, there's a brilliant thing called um, absorbing elements. <laughs> okay. Where I would absorb the charred elements and absorb it into my hot bod, and then I try to... Uh, the only way I not that really mean, how that spell works. But I'm going to need to try I need to try something because I'm a ranger who can't do ranger shit. Okay, well, you're going to try and absorb elements, so I'm going to get you to roll a nature check. Great. Oops, sorry. Come on, you're baby. You just garden it like a gardener. <laughs> but if I'm there all day, dude, besides when a oh, grass is completely good. charred, when a grass is charred, you either need to get a new, like, grass seed to replant the grass, or you just have to take out the whole thing and restart, which is not a good idea. Because <laughs> then you're going to have mismatched grass. <clears throat> you nasty, you don't want mismatched grass. Yeah, roll that what nature check for me. I'm going to. It's taking its hot, diggly second. A boop. A boost. Oh fuck me! Hey, I get to actually start you as my first, my new natural one video in the stream. Uh no, no, no! I don't like this. <laughs> All right, so um, yeah. So oh boo! Boo! Oh, it's so boo! Sad. <laughs> boo! <laughs> So you put your hand <laughs> to the ground in the scorch in the scorched region. It's like a five foot wide sw a swath that's been cut out by this, and try to connect to anything left, like just with your mind, connect to anything living left there. And oh nothing. shit! They got nothing out of it. I thought you were gonna be like, and then the rest of the grass turns brown, and I'm like, ah oh, shit. <laughs> I don't do fumbles. I don't roll that way unless it's actually good for the story, and I don't think that would have been good for the story this time. Okay, well then, forget. I'm gonna roll stealth and try and stealthily fix the garden by doing gardener shit. Okay, and well, try you... to. Okay, go I don't know. Because I'm going to be here a while, more than likely, if I'm going to do this entire line of grass. 
Well, and you could try starting kind of feeling around it. Go ahead and roll a stealth check then. With my pass without trace, that gets it up to Fernie 1. Oh, all right. I put pass without trace before we went that's out, right. remember? That's right. that's right, I forgot. So you guys are mm-hmm. making your way, and you're trying to feel around for anything. Like, you see a few um, bushes detached from whatever might have been here, some debris that does still have a little bit of green to it, and you just kind of start taking some of this debris and just, like, throwing it on top of the black. And you're doing so... I mean, quietly. You've got the shadows to kind of support you just a little bit here, too. So you kind of throw some stuff out on there, so it looks like this black scorch mark with that somebody's just kind of, like, tried to throw de- uh, broken leaves onto and to try to cover it up very ineffectively. But there's at least something green there now. Great. Mm, I you get the sense that if you were to do this because of the uh, swath, it's like a 120-foot line times three, five feet wide each. And you kind of get the sense that if you were to do this, you'd be here for weeks. Great. My only thing is that I can't do anything more. Man, if only we had a druid. Perhaps uh-huh. a druid Don't. monk. <laughs> Don't get me started. I wanted to be a fucking druid. You guys, you guys, where are you guys going? Uh, to Wrath. Yeah. We're gonna look for him. We're gonna okay. try and unlock well, doors. I'm gonna try and unlock going? that door. <laughs> where are you going to go look? You got options, you got the, like, the wholeness. Actually, there's one place I haven't described well, yet. Well, it's probably the contract. other tower that looks like the tower we just came from. You do see that there is kind of this fenced off area to your left. The tower is kind of straight out away from you. The, uh, the pavilion that you spent the night in is to your right. And you do see that there's a screen that seems to kind of go between all of these. So, fenced off area, tower, uh, or to the doors. Uh, I vote tower. I also vote tower. All right, so you guys start making your way towards the tower. And in order to get there, you guys have to get, like, kind of pushing through this garden. Um, just on the edge of one of the swaths, just a little bit past one of the last of the three swaths that you kind of walk through of uh, of charred area, um, you see opening up on the other side is this large pond that the stream kind of goes through. Uh, willow trees encircling this pond, um, lily pads kind of dotting um, this surface of water that is just absolutely calm. Looks like almost like a mirror as opposed to water. And there's dragonflies like kind of darting about looking for some sort of nourishment um you do see some what might have been fireflies that aren't moving and the dragonflies are kind of picking those things up as they go by um there's a lot of them that kind of flow a lot of these fireflies that are just kind of sitting above the water no longer glowing the dragonflies just kind of Picking, some, picking them off. Um, so uh, there is a footbridge to your left and a footbridge to your right. The footbridge to your left actually takes you up the stairs towards the door, if you want. But you can also go go around the pond to get to the tower instead, if you'd like. Or you could try and go through the pond if you wanted to. As fun as that sounds, we should probably go around. I levitate right. over the ponds. No, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you step across the. Um, sorry, hang on one second. Okay. Yeah, it steps across. You step across to uh, towards the t- tower, and as you set, get to the tower, again, it's a. It's a li- It's about the same t- height uh, as the other tower that the lion was in. Um, there are stairs that kind of hug up the side of it that you can actually step up into it, just like the other tower did, almost like a perfect mirror of it. This one um, says has a little bronze placard above it this time that you can see. It says um, "Wrath," and as you step in, you see that this t- this tower. Unlike the oak-filled tower on the other side, this one is filled with hawthorn trees. Um, this large thicket that's just kind of, it 
almost bramble throughout the entire thing. Um, you see, it's again, no roof, 30 feet tall and extends out to the sky, um, but barely invisible is the sky again through the Hawthorne. Um, at the heart of this thicket, kind of looking through a, a small pathway underneath some of the brambles, you can see there is a creature in there and it's pawing the ground or rather hoofing the ground angrily and you hear in a much deeper voice than the lion provided we are wrath why are you here hello um we're trying to get in the palace so we can help um your mistress um i presume that you're breath right and it ducks its head down to get through the bra uh, the brambles and when as it steps up through the brambles you can see this large um almost tangled web of oh, almost looks like the haw hawthorn branches themselves on top of this very sizable iron stag. Oh, looks tall a stag. Down on you and says, We did just say that. Oops. To sorry. this one, I do a bow because I like deers. <laughs> <laughs> and the stag does kind of drops its brow towards you as well. God, and why sense. are you treating with us as opposed to waiting at the pavilion. We were told we need to speak to you directly due to some conflicts with Sibilna already happening. We have I do believe a lot of information you're... and we have been told you have some thorns for us. Um, okay, sorry, just give me one second. Okay. Nom, 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 nom. So, um, what it says back to you, <laughs> and um, what do you need of us? A way into the palace. The way in is in the pond. Like there's a key in the pond, or Crap. swim through the. Oh. Oh. Granted God. to those who are consented by the mistress. Interesting. So we go to the pond and then do we come back here if we get the crown? Perhaps. Some doors inside the palace, if you are granted such passage. Do not unlock or lock by way of my brow, but rather by Envy's brow. Oh. Oh. Who wants to go pond diving? I'm down. Crack snuckles. I will start to... Uh... <laughs> no, you won't. Because I have to break it to you, love. I can breathe underwater, and I can hold my breath indefinitely. You will drown. Wait, you're an air genasi, and you can breathe underwater? Yes, you did! <laughs> 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 yeah, Scrax is an air genasi, too. Oh my god, you guys. That's Thank true. you so much. Anyway, holds breath, dives into water. Okay, so you guys, you, Evalric, you immediately step out. Scrags is right with you, by the way. Stepping out and goes, you go back to the pond fairly quickly. Um, as you go to step into the pool, do you dive or do you? I dive. Okay. If I'm told it's deep. All right. So you dive straight into the pool, and diving straight in, you can you have this ability to kind of keep some air about you, um, so that you don't have to worry about doing the breathing thing. However, that air suddenly gets really tight, and it's almost as if you've got a hand gripping your face. 
inside the pool and pulls you back up to the water, uh, to, to the top of the water. As you break the surface, anybody else who's around, Scrags in particular, will actually notice that there is, seems to be this hand over top, hand of water, almost like, how many of you guys have seen the movie The Abyss? Oh, God damn it. Okay, so like like fingers coming out of the water, of water coming out of the water, gripping around his face and shoving you back to the shore. So the pond doesn't like Volric. And as he shoves you to the shore, Volric, what do you do? Grab the fat, grab the hand, shocking grasp. <laughs> You're gonna shocking grasp the pawn. The hand, yeah. All right. Yeah, I am. All right, roll your attack. Whatever is thing. in this thing is going to get a little bit of a shock. That is right. Whatever is in this thing is going to get a little bit. Of I'm a shock. resistant. I can't kill myself. I've tried. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Uh, okay, so to do that, it is, I think it's literally just my, yeah, boop, oh, a boop, a 13. Alright, marvelous. Um, go ahead and roll damage. Bonk. You take six, six. points of lightning damage. I take three. <laughs> Fine, you take three points of lightning damage um, as you are thrown out of the water. God damn it! Does nothing get affected? You don't see anything being affected by it. Bastard. Hmm. Um, Dottie, are you there? Yeah. Roll, an, a roll a perception check. I think I have an idea. Twelve? Um, yeah, with a 12, you do see further out into the water, in the, in the now disturbed surface of the water, you do see this school of fish, blackfish, shimmering underneath the water, kind of swimming a little bit of a distance away in a, in a swirl, um, probably about 30 feet away from Vulric. Hmm. And what's weird about it, it's swimming in a shape that looks vaguely humanoid. The body of school of fish. You see an arm almost kind of formed from it. And this bulbous head. Can I um, reach out with a message spell? Yes, you certainly can. Hello! We're just looking for the crown to try to get in the palace and help Zabilna. Okay, hopefully this worked. Okay. <laughs> it looks like it's back on. I think it's, wor I think it's working again. Uh, yeah, I'm going to refresh. Again. Jeepers. You know what? This is what we call technology at its finest. Isn't it wonderful, folks? Thank you guys for breaking my stream. You're still awesome. I don't care. Nonetheless, um, <laughs> we got ourselves going again. Thank heaven for uh, Disconnect Protect, um, because we can keep this thing going.
all there is to it. OBS is just freaking out. There. Okay. Okay, well, we're going again. Ah. <laughs> I'm just going to play the game now. I'm sorry, y'all, to my wonderful Raiders. Thank you guys very much for jumping in. I appreciate you guys so much. And for the follow-up is canon. I really do appreciate it. Um, but um, this, as you kind of reach out with your message, Dottie, to these creatures, uh, to this creature that is formed by the way of uh, ship, uh, of, of fish, black fish, you get this message back um, in common that says, then keep the electric thing out. And there's a shot a shout out there from to uh Iyer Genasi and Marcus the DM. Good to see you guys in the oh, screen. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, Iyer Genasi. Yeah. Ooh, can we be friends, maybe? <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's um, creatures m messages back to you saying keep the electric thing out. Can I I am it? gonna say I'm gonna say that Volrick's gonna keep go, but Volvik's gonna continually keep trying, and if he fails, he's like, fucking shucks! <laughs> Until someone tells him to stop. Volvik, hold on one second. <laughs> Dottie says, bitch! <laughs> shucks of water. <laughs> but I need to go, so I'm gonna love you and leave you. Bye! Okay, no. Take care, buddy. Bye! And, uh, so as Volvik does one more shock, he's gonna take some more damage, so I want somebody to roll for me. Um... Now, uh, let's see here. Where is it? Let's roll for me. What is the roll that it was? It was a... Uh, roll 2d8 for me, please. I have Shock and Grasp, too, if you just Make want to really roll it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I love doing oh, yeah. damage to my party members. Okay, so they're going to take, uh, <laughs> they're gonna take two more points of damage. Oh, I could have had the chat do it. Of course I could have had the chat do it, but I didn't set it up properly. Um, nonetheless, um, two points of, of damage for... Um, because they have resistance for Volric, and I'll put that into their sheet. Nonetheless, Dottie, um, you do eventually get Volric to kind of step back in frustration. If you don't, Scrags does. Um, you, you go to reach towards the pool and trying to kind of like reach out to kind of keep it calm and joyfully it connects to this thing. As you do, the school of fish come up to you and one of the little fish kind of start um, tipping at, their, at your palm, lifting it up out of the water. And in your underneath your palm appears this silver needled crown. Ooh. Thank you, fishies. <laughs> and so you go to grasp it and it's prickly. It is kind of actually hard to hold for any length of time. I mean, you kind of get your hands, but it is, there's so many needles around this thing that uh, it's going it, to, it could potentially cause you some significant challenge if you hold on to it for too, too long. So is this what we're looking for? Can I use As my beanie so. to hold on to it? Yes, you can totally use your beanie on it uh, for it. Okay. And uh, so you take your beanie off and kind of put it into the beanie. And as you hold on, as you're doing it, you hear this whisper across the breeze. It comes in, in this sing-song voice. The beginning of whenever, the end of ever after, the start of an age, the finale of every moment, the first in history. And I'll type it out for you. Huh. Um, this will take me a couple to type it out, but I will type it out for you. And, oh, I don't have my Roll20 working because of the weird little things that happen. I'll get it in there in a second. Um, boom. Boom. Here we go. All right, let's get that chat in there. So, it is the beginning of whenever the end of ever after the start of an age, the finale of every moment, the first in history. I will copy that into my notes. There you go. Alrighty. And that's coming through so people can see it. 
Um, with that, you take the crown. Where do, what do you do with it? Um, let's go back to Wrath. All right. So as you head back towards Wrath with this in your hands, there's a donation. Oh my gosh! Iron Genasi, you are amazeballs. Just in case y'all didn't know that, there's a hundred dollars that just got Whoa. thrown into that in, for Make a Wish. <laughs> okay, That's cool. So cool. Thank you. Awesome. Oh my gosh. Hang on. I have no idea if you have a channel that you do a lot of stuff with on right now, Eric Genasi, but I am doing this. Um, because yeah, because that's darn amazing. Oh, they haven't played a game recently, but you know what? Listen, Iron Genasi, you amaze balls. I like it a lot. I don't know that I actually want to carry on with this at the moment because that is a really, really, really great thing, and my mind is blown, and I love it. So that hang on, that kills the goal. We hit the goal. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Awesome. Oh that man, so I cool. can't wait to tell them. Oh my gosh. Yeah, you know what, guys? I'm pausing that. I'm pausing the game here because we were about to stop the game sometime soon anyway, but I'm just blown at that. Iron Genasi, you are amazing. Thank you so, so, so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, awesome. what do I do? What do I say with that? That is just, that is so wonderful. Um, I got to know. Okay, mm -hmm. Matt 20 and a DM inspiration towards this person right here, Iron Genasi. You are amazing. <laughs> There we go. Then you get both of those things. Um, that's, mm, mm, I'm very happy with you right now. I'm just going to say that out loud. And yeah, there we go. Very got beautiful. it. Got it. Got it. That is so much. Yeah. And so for those of you who aren't really familiar with this, we do have a guild of a whole bunch of random ass folks that just from all over the world. We have somebody from uh, Singapore, somebody in uh, Hong Kong. I'm in Alberta, Canada. Uh, we've got people from uh, all over the United States, which I think is about both where er, uh, Ender and uh, cool. Caffeine are from. Um, Dak in the chat, you're from uh, England, uh, if, if I remember correctly. Um, Carney, who plays Scraggs, usually is in to Tokyo, Japan, in Japan for sure. Um, you're from the Black Tower. I love it. And like, like, if you wanted to get in on the guild, you could certainly do that. i got to find that guild invite again. Um, let me find that right now, because that's, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. let's get the guild invite into that chat. I, I'm just, uh, I'm kind of beside myself, and I'm so happy, because I get to excite. This is, uh, I, I, you know, we've blown it out of the water, that makes me super happy. Let's find all my invitations. Um, hang on, I have an invite code already, where is my invite code? I can't find my invite code, but I can tell you guys can also check out the site if you wanted to. Um, da -da -da -da. Because uh, that's the site right there. Uh, it's I haven't had a chance to update it recently, but that doesn't mean that you guys can't still check out to see what's going on. Because we, I'm going to do some announcements. Why not? I can do some announcements. Uh, so the first one is on Friday. We're going to pick up our next game, uh, which is the Olivon Chronicles. It's a homebrew um, that uh, right now they're dealing with a whole bunch of political intrigue. Not to mention a person that an NPC that they turned into one of the bad evil guys. Uh, the uh, that they that they may or may not deal with right away. They can't seem to decide sometimes. Um, but there's also now a disease that they are going to have to check out or something along those lines, and that happens on Friday at 1 p.m. UTC. Um, let's see here. Uh, where is all my inv invites? Where's my invites? Uh, uh, I can't. There we go. Invites. There's the codes. Um, let's go here. This is this one here probably. Nope, this one. Oh, why can't I work it? It's not letting me. Um, it's not letting me find it. I'll put. I'll make up a new invite and I'll put it in the, down below. Uh, nonetheless, um, the we also have on Friday at eight thirty caffeine. UPC. Yes, that's correct. Uh, that is at caffeine's game. That there, there it is. Thank you. Um, caffeine's game is gonna is an Adventures of Alain. Again, it's another homebrew, and that's on Friday as well. And then on Tuesday next week, we do our final session of the Roll for Wishes campaign. And I might just invite a guest just because we can, um, just to say, yay, thank you. And um, yeah, so that is our final session. You helped us get it by our March deadline, I, I, our Genasi. Um, so, so much appreciation for that. But they, they are doing a campaign that was written for uh, Make-A-Wish International, and it's a D&D &D campaign called Roll for Wishes, which is what we've been doing. So awesomeness. And then Wednesday, we're back here again. 
And I believe Wednesday, um, and there you can tell me whether or not this is true because I know that there's been some schedule changes for Verod. Um, but D DM Verod is going to be running the Legend of Zelda Echoes campaign next Wednesday, I believe, as well. Yeah, um, yeah. He, he said... He's a dad. Yeah. So, a it's, new it's dad has to change off, the schedule. But um, he says that if we're able to get a game, it will be a little longer than usual. So. That's cool. So you might have a longer session next week, which would be good. Um, but yeah, that'll be a Legend of Echoes or Legend of Zelda Echoes campaign. It's a Pathfinder thing. Also, uh, put out some shout out if you enjoy. Uh, look at the videos on demand. Uh, you certainly can because um, there's lots of fun things, including Paul Anella the Bee from uh, from this campaign, which has now kind of become uh, one of our emotes. Uh, that you can see in our channel. You can also sub use, of course, uh, the Windy J D and D Guild um, things. You know, we, this is some of our merch. If you're interested in that kind of stuff, um, uh, but you know what? You threw some money and make a wish. I'm happy with just that. That's just fantastic. I'm so happy about that. So thank you guys very much. Um, yeah, we're. I am pausing this game here. You guys have now found yourselves a crown that should theoretically be a key to get yourself into the Palace of Heart's Desire. You're going to head over to Raff, the Iron Stag, to try and have it converted into said key that you can use. And maybe it'll open what you need it to open. We'll find out soon enough. Um, but thank you guys very much for joining, and we will see you guys next right, week. Actually, let's go find somebody that we can raid in turn, because Dead Odyssey Gamer came to us. Maybe we can go and um, raid Arrow 4, uh, doing a chat plays thing. Uh, on D and D, how does that sound, you guys? Feel good about that idea? Awesome. Yeah. Let's do this. So we are raiding Arrow Four. Uh, thank you again, uh, Iyer Janasi, for everything. Thank you, Dead Aussie Gamer, uh, for the raid. Um, you are amazing, human. This is why I love D and D because the community is just bloody amazing. So, thank you guys very much, and we will see you next week. Take care of each other and love each other as always. Peace out. <laughs>